In July 2012, Physicians for Peace traveled to Rivers State, Nigeria, with the goal of reducing the country's high infant mortality rate. In Nigeria, birth care providers who are not trained to recognize birth asphyxia often believe the infant is stillborn or deceased. This crucial time in a newborn's life is called the Golden Minute. Infants die every day. Um, I see people die every day uh, in my village. Um, there's death uh, of the mother from childbirth. There's death uh, of the infant. And there are so many factors responsible for that. Most of it is um, our ignorance. What we see here is, is saddening. The woman is in labor, become obstructed. You can't see what's happening when the baby is inside mom, but oftentimes the baby is having distress of some sort. There's no reason for them to have the mortality rate that they do. I mean, every day we're stimulating a baby to, t to take its first breath, um, and they do fine afterwards. But they need that, we, we call it a jump start. These are doll babies. Um, they're used to really demonstrate and show um, uh, the trainees and what to do in those first, that golden minute of life. Because what kept the baby going, which was the, the linkage to the cord and the, through, to the mother through the cord, has been severed. So the baby just has to breathe. If the baby isn't breathing, then the baby stands a very high chance of dying. Traumatic that anybody taking the delivery will want to resuscitate, but the question is, how is it being done? Nigeria, in the villages, what happens is that when the infant comes out, they go this way. Slap the baby on the back, shake the baby, turn him upside down, pour cold water on his face. Those are the practices that had been. It is now that we're beginning to reorientate. So we're here to actually tell them that if they have a step-by-step approach to that care, the infant will survive. Okay. One, two, three. Maybe that baby was meconium stained, meaning stool all over it, and it swallowed it. This is how you make a better outcome just by doing this. <coughs> Suck out that mouth and that nose first, and then rub the baby, and you may see a totally different outcome. I think that was new to me because I was more used to cleaning the baby first before going into the helping the baby to breathe. For me, that was me. And that you give one to three minutes that the baby must cry before you separate the cord. That was the, those are the things I have gathered today. Just those few simple steps, if that's what's causing these babies to die, there's, they could save babies all the time. Working in the kind of area that I am, I am right now, the health facility in the village, I think what I'm going away with is that I could actually keep a baby alive, irrespective of what I have on hand. Nigeria is mostly rural. Because it's rural, we have less education, uh, less awareness of what to do. Before I came into that health center, before I came into that village, the, the women were used to delivering with the TB as the traditional birth attendants. These women, are, they have more confidence in the traditional birth attendants whom they have been used to and they are culturally accepted to them. We call them traditional birth attendants because they have been in the community. They are not formally trained. But if they are properly taken care of at the local level, I think that, that will save a lot of babies from dying. It's a welcome development. We need to let the villagers, at least in their own local language, know that there's a need for us to save, no matter how many lives, even if it's just one life, that there's a need to save such a life. So these nurses see babies every day, every day, every day that die. So they, they, they want to rush in. You can see they, they, they all want to train. 
but we can't do it all at one, at one visit. When they did well and they did okay on their tests, they were really excited. They were clapping and smiling. They, they're thrilled. They have these huge smiles. It's like you saved the world just by giving them that little bit of information. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we experienced them coming in to teach the classes, and I was absolutely amazed at how well they did. So by training the trainers, we provide the facility, we provide the extension cord for PFP to reach out to the villages. They presented so well, and they, their trainers now, and we were watching them like, wow, they got the information and now they're training others. So we got to kind of see the, the results. When I get home, I will teach the TBAs if they are ready to learn, so that they could as well help to keep babies alive. You can put a lot of money into an institution, into a hospital. If not used right, it doesn't work. If the personnel who are there don't understand how to use it, then it makes no sense. It's important for us to pass the information on. People want to be able to do for themselves. They don't want charity. We have to give of our, our um, time and talents. I think that's why we're on this earth, basically. We have been given a lot of life-saving skills. We have a way of improvising to make sure that these babies live. I can pass it on and others, that my colleague that we are here together will equally pass it on and like that it will spread around and infant mortality will be reduced.